Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So today I'm going to be playing in my small Dilusions journal. And I have a new stencil that I will tell you about as I'm using it, that I'm going to use in the creation of my page. So this is my small Dilusions journal. and I'm on one of my clean up mopping up pages. Um, I'm going to, I've got a couple of sheets of book text that I've got from Happy Mail that I'm going to just stick down as is, um, right like that, as they are. Um, so that's the first thing that I'm going to do. I have a kind of picture in my head today of, of what I kind of want to do, but whether it turns out like that is going to be anybody's guess. So hopefully it's not going to be... Um, too much of a, um, a hardship today to achieve what I want to do. So I'm just going to go over the top. I'm not bothered about bubbles and wrinkles in the paper. It just all adds to texture. I can smooth some of these out once I start to heat it. Ooh, he says. That's a definite oops moment. Whoops. There we go. Most of those air bubbles will come out. And if they don't, they don't. Who cares, really? Not me. I mean, it's not as though I'm trying to create a museum piece or something to hang in an art gallery or display in a magazine. This is just for me, so... So what? I think a lot of us get uh, a little bit... I won't say too precious with our art journal pages. You know, it should just be a case that, you know, you're doing this for you. Art journaling is a, is, is a purely um, personal art form. You know, and even if you're sharing what you're doing on, you know, Instagram, Flickr, Pinterest, whatever, or whatever social network site of your choice, you know, it is still, you know, a personal thing. And those of us that do art journaling appreciate and know, you know, that these things are personal. We don't expect perfection from anybody particularly ourselves so you know you have license you have license to do whatever you want okay so I think there's enough on that well, we'll find out when we start sticking it oh drying it anyway and if some of it tears off the edges then you know so much the better okay let's get the heat going on that okay so that page is now dry and as you can see most of the bubbles have um stretched themselves out a bit like wallpaper so it's not as bad as it looked to start off with now we have still got um some overlap but that's fine because I'm going to leave that probably towards the end and then I'll probably trim that off when the page is finished so happy with that so time for a quick slurp now on my desk I have buttermilk lime yellow terracotta and ochre and a deep orange I don't want to use those so I'm going to have to go and have a fertile now in my drawer because I want to use kind of greenish yellowishy kind of tone so I might keep that lime yellow out and go and see if I can find some turquoisey blues and maybe some lighter blue so I'll be right back don't go anywhere okay so here we go I have Reeves Acrylic Deep Terquoise, Reeves Acrylic Cerulean Blue Hue, 
very posh. I've got, that's a little shaking up because I've not used it for a long time, Grandma's Teacup from Indigo Blue, so that's kind of a Wedgwoody kind of blue, hence the Grandma's Teacup. We have Townhouse Teal, again from Indigo Blue, a nice turquoisey, kind of light turquoisey, and then from um, Do Crafts, from their Artiste range, I have the Periwinkle Blue. But I've also got this lime yellow, and looking at the back of my desk was some titanium white. So I'm going to just squirt, I'm not going to gesso, I'm just going to squirt a little bit of these, and then <laughs> with my finger, I'm just going to rub out and of course in about three days time because I've done this with my fingers with no barrier cream at all the skin will start to peel or maybe not okay so Grab myself a baby wipe. I'm trying not to get paint over my trousers. Now, of course, my overhead camera lights will be making this a bit lighter than it actually is. There you go. Make it a bit shiny. So what I want to do is I'm going to hit that with a heat gun and but stop it before it gets completely dry. There, that'll do. And next I'm going to grab Townhouse Teal and just see if I can drop a little bit of that. That might be um, a bit too gloopy to pour out because it can be quite thick sometimes. As much as I love the indigo blue paint, when they start getting towards the bottom of the pot, they do all sorts of strange things. Right, where's that baby wipe? Actually, <laughs> yeah. Great on there. There you go, we've turned into a messy day. Unplanned messy day. Okay, just clean the fingers, baby wipe away, heat gun. That's all dry. So next up, turquoise blue. So some darker notes. So I'm going to put a little bit, not a lot. Just there. And then again, with the spatula. And my finger. the impreciseness of the effect that I'm getting. No idea how it's going to kind of work on the page. 
get some of that darkness down there in the corner. A little bit of purple up there. Let's see if we can get rid of that by reclaiming some of this paint. And then, there we go. Purple, gone. Okay, liking that. Heat gun. Okay, so that's now dry. So I'm going to bring in some of this lime yellow just for a little bit of contrast. I haven't cleaned my finger, look. Is that? Baby wipe in the bin is still wet enough for me to clean my finger off. Just about. Mm, got bits sticking to it now. That'll do. Okay, so again, so I'm just going to drop a tiny amount. Ugh. No, we didn't want that. Okay. Tiny amount of the green or yellow, lime yellow, it says on the on the label, but lime green, lime yellow, yeah, you decide. page is warm still from the heat gun so therefore the paint is drying really really quickly that's not a bad thing though just a little touch I'm liking that. It may look like a complete hot mess, but it's my hot mess. And I like it. So I'm just cleaning my fingers. I've just dropped some paint on the carpet. Never mind. Okay, fingers dried. Quick blast again. Okay, so that's now very, very dry. I can put that to one side. Now, I didn't use Grandma's teacup, which is, again, this is almost like a, a lilac -y blue. So I'm just going to put a little bit on there. And I'm throwing absolutely everything at this page today. Some from up there. Don't like that much, so some of that's coming off. beauty with acrylic paint. You can do that once it's, as long as it's not completely dry, you're okay. That'll do for Grandma's teacup. So that's introduced that nice kind of lilac-y effect.
Okay, so that grandma's teacup's now completely dry and I've allowed a couple of minutes just for the pages to cool down. So the, there's still a little bit of heat in there, but not a lot. So I just have the final colour then, the cerulean blue hue. And again, just very, very, I just love those. Gear off. With acrylic paint being made of plastic. Right. Little dob. Little dob. Just in the middles. Not a lot. Just a tiny amount. And then I'm just going to There's that baby wipe again. And then right in the middle. And then just take some of that off from the bottom. That will do, I think. He says, just removing a bit more. That's it. Happy with that. So I'll just clean my fingers. Grab the heat gun again. And I think we're ready to rock and roll. Okay, so all that's dry. So I'm happy with all the different layers and colours and all that kind of gubbins on there. I'll put that Mod Podge away now. And then I'm going to bring out the Titanium White. And put a splodge on my craft mat. I have a cosmetic sponge just here. And this is the stencil I was talking about. This is the Roundel stencil. So what I want to do, is I'm going to place it just up there on that top left hand corner. And then I'm going to use my sponge and I'm going to stencil through And I'm going to go over a couple of times and build up the colour and the layers because you won't get it all in one go. It won't go white, white all in one go. As you're laying the colour down, obviously it's starting to dry because you're only doing very, very thin layers. So if you leave these ones up here while you're working down here, these will start to dry. And then by the time you get all the way down and you're done down here, over here will be dry enough that you can go back over and lighten them up even more. And then I can go ones in the middle.
very therapeutic this. I think <sighs> lovely. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the stencil around, just move it up slightly, and then I'm going to repeat the process over here. So I'm going to hold the stencil because my page has started to buckle a little bit with the, the heat and the layers of paint. Now, as I said, this stencil will be um, going on my website towards the end of August for purchase and for pre-order. And it'll be released around about um, the 5th of September. I think the 5th of September is the first Monday in September, if my memory serves, which is when I normally... Um, release my stencils for sale. If you're one of my angels, thank you, you will be able to pre-order this before then and as soon as it arrives in it'll be sent out even before the 5th of September. So you could probably have it in your collection if you're an angel before the 5th of September, before everybody else gets it. And that's one of the thank yous for being an angel. You can pre-order the stuff and have it before everybody else. Okay, I think we're running out of paint, but that's fine. Love that. So I'm going to give that a quick blast. Okay, so that's dry, dry enough for me to touch it. I'm going to just lay the stencil back down again because these I'm not quite happy with. So I've got some more of the white paint out and now that they're dry I can just go over and add another layer of paint over the top just to whiten them up a little bit more. The paint was getting a bit thin. Of course, depending on how much pressure you put down while you're adding your paint, also get off. Interloper there also depends on how white white it goes. I think I'm happy with that. Yeah, definitely, definitely happy with that. Okay, stencil can now be washed. Give that a quick blast and then I can also tidy up here in a minute. Actually no, I'm not going to tidy up there because I'm going to need that in a second. Okay, so all dry. So what I'm going to do is using these bubbles up here, I say bubbles, circles, I'm just going to add a little bit of balance in that corner. I'm just going to go fairly lightly, not too heavy. sounds like I'm beating down on it but here we go and then I can do the same thing in this corner get that remaining bit to paint I've arranged the holes in such a way that they do break up the pattern Like that, so that's it. So now I can clean this off while I dry that off. And I'll be back in two secs. 
Okay, so that's now all dry. Go away, Mr. Pencil. So I've got some very nice regimented white, white splodges and bubble kind of effect on that page. I now want something more random. So I'm going to grab a little bit more of that titanium white, not a lot. I'm going to add some water and then we're going to add some splatters to the page. Make sure I mix the paint in properly. That'll do. Not many, but enough. Let's clear the excess up. And again, give them a blast. Okay, now that's dry, I'm going to remove the excess from the page. little bit but that's okay. You can always just add a spot of glue behind that. It's stuck down quite nicely so that's now all nicely trimmed. Okay so cleaned off the stencil so I can now put that away. Page is all nice and dry and ready to go all trimmed. So I now have my small talk stickers from Tim Holtz and I found two phrases which I think go quite well together. So I have the first one which is find joy in the ordinary which I'm going to put up here leading into that bubble there and I will go over this with some matte medium later and the other one is see possibility everywhere. I'm going to put that between those bubbles there leading into that one. And I think I'm going to call that a day once I've gone over that with some matte medium. Now, because of the amount of acrylic paint that I've put on here and the amount of um, Mod Podge and matte medium that I'm going to put here, just to make sure that it's nicely sealed down and won't go anywhere and fall off in a week or two. In the past I've suffered, as I'm sure many of you have, um, with my art journal pages sticking together. Now I've got a couple of tricks that stop my pages from sticking together. Um, <clears throat> I've gone through those a couple of times. First one is get a wax tea light candle, it's paraffin wax, and rub that on the edges of your page um, and that will stop your pages from sticking together. The other one is a chapstick. You can rub chapstick over the page as well and that stops it from sticking together. But the one that I found that works the best, now excuse me for talking over the sound of the heat gun, is because I want this dry quickly um, so that I can just get straight on with um, showing you the other way that I found that stops the pages from sticking together when there's a lot of acrylic paint on there. So as soon as I've got this dried off, of course the heat that it absorbs will help dry it on its own. So just very very quickly Okay, that should do it. So while that's drying, I'm just going to grab another baby wipe and just clean off what little 
Mod Podge is left on the brush. So I'll just rub that remnants off because there's not a lot left on there. I didn't really put that much on it. But that should be enough to stop it from turning into a gelatinous mess within the next few seconds or so while we add our last layer. So, Mod Podge away. <clears throat> just make sure that's dry. Yep, all nice and dry. Now, the other way of making sure that your pages don't stick together is add a coat of clear gesso. So once you've got everything down, get your clear gesso, grab your brush, and just go over the entire thing with that clear gesso as a sealing coat, and that will then stop your pages, or I found that it stops my pages from sticking together, particularly if you pay attention to the crease, this section here, which is where it normally catches. Of course, clear gesso is clear, <laughs> so it doesn't affect any of the colours, and because we've used acrylic paints, matte mediums, and all that kind of stuff, then none of your colours are going to move. So this works particularly well, like I said, if your page has got a lot of acrylic paint on it, and it's quite thick. So that, I find, in my opinion, may not work for you, you've got to try it for yourself, is how I stop my heavy pages, like this, from sticking together. Oop, pop the lid back on, and grab the heat gun once more. Okay, so that's now all dry. Those pages, now they've had that clear gesso on them, are not gonna stick together. So the last thing that I need to do, and I've got my date stamp just here, is to sign and date it. So and I'm going to do that. I think I'll do it up the side here. So 9th of August, and grab my Pigma Micron number five. And this is from Sakura. And then just scribble my little scroll across the top. And then I'm calling this page done. I really enjoyed doing that page, a bit unusual, a bit different, no collage in this one, so no focal image really, apart from the use of the stencil going waving all the way down through the page, so I haven't done a page like that for quite some time. Uh, so it was a nice break from the norm, uh, and as I said, adding that white gesso, uh, not white gesso, the clear gesso on there will stop the pages from sticking together. I wish I'd known that when I first started out journaling. It would have saved me a lot of heartache. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up, share the video with all your friends, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, I nearly forgot what I was going to say then, then you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all for me for now. I will see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now.